Hello YouTube, uh, up here at Sawmill, uh, it's Wednesday night, and we're going to do a little bit of sawmill maintenance. Um, time to change the oil in the old bus motor, uh, we like to do it sometimes twice a year, depends on how much sawing, but uh, it's early spring, so it's time to do that. Uh, we're going to sharpen the saw blade up, and before I do anything, I'm going to fire up the bus motor, let it warm up for a couple minutes, uh, that way the oil will drain out a lot faster. And I'm going to bring the carriage down to this side of the track here and then that way we can do a little bit of maintenance on the carriage, do some tightening down of some things and um, that way um, make sure everything stays in, in good adjustment. So we'll go up and uh, fire up the old bus motor here real quick. And it's nice and warm out, it's like 57 degrees. So yeah, she fired right up, so I'll have to turn the blade on now, and then we'll run the carriage down the end of the track here, so uh, we can do some adjustments. Alrighty, and a lot of people want to know what all these controls do, but this is the uh, carriage uh, control here, this runs the carriage up and down the tracks, so we'll go ahead and get her out of the way here. A little bit more light out there and a little bit more room to work around it. That log deck sometimes is fun to work on. I gotta watch, I got some stickers down the end there. We'll shove them tight. That'll work. It gives me enough room. And we also want to run the uh, knees back a little bit. So on the controls here, you can see um, we have forward, reverse, we got five buttons. Each one of these buttons down here is a board thickness. And then this is the fast forward. If you watch the knees, that's what runs the knees in and out. And I want to run them back so I can get behind them and work a little bit more. And that should do it. So we'll go ahead and let this warm up for a little bit. And we'll be back with you and we'll start draining some oil down here and start tightening some things up. I'll show you what we look for in the carriage. I'll be with you in a second. Okay, I think she's warm enough here, so we'll go ahead and shut the old bus motor down, let the oil drain down, and we're going to go over to the carriage here, and basically you want to visually inspect everything, and there's, there's bolts that hold the dogs in place, you want to make sure nothing's coming loose, make sure all the clips are in place. Uh, the hoses, some of them are original from when we got the mill. Uh, keep an eye for bad oil leaks. Um, you just want to just visually inspect everything. And after that's more or less done. Um, and someone had commented about the log turner. Um, it picks the carriage up. Well, of course it does. These <coughs> little devices here these are called anti-derail devices. Anybody that runs a sawmill with a log turner has some sort of anti-derail device on their mill. Otherwise your carriage will be laying on its pack off the, off the tracks. And this guy here has fingers. There's three of them. And once it gets to this point and touches that track, it can't come off. Um, when you're rolling a log, you're basically coaxing this carriage to roll over and then on the back side of my tracks at the log deck there's like a uh, bit of a ledge that they had welded on I don't know if Edmonston had done that originally or if the owner of the mill had done that and then when you get back to your uh, actual head blocks or your L's uh, the way this thing works is there's a rack and pinion system that uh, feeds the knees in and out and there's the gear assembly um, we will be eventually oiling these up I use like a chainsaw bar oil most of the modern mills run a roller chain now and you want to make sure that these bolts are tight because this is your you don't have to get crazy on these but you don't want them uh, you don't want these things in here just halfway loose this bolt here is very important because this is your adjustment. Um, this allows this knee to go in and out towards the blade. So you can fine tune each knee independently from the set shaft. 
So when you set this mill up originally, you should be able to tweak it in and it should stay like that for literally years. Um, again, you want to come on the back side of the carriage. Again, looking at, see we got a hose right here that's one day going to, one day it's going to blow out, but uh, it's on the um, in and out on the dogs. Um, you just visually look at things. If I would have replaced every hose on here originally, um, we got a year and a half of service on this mill without changing these hoses, so why fix something that's not broken? We're not production sawing here. This is, uh, this is our private little mill, and uh, we're not trying to cut 100,000 feet a day, and I know there's people that, you know, it's what it's all about, production, but you gotta get a little bit of enjoyment, too. And here's our last one. Uh, We'll come through and tighten everything. I just wanted to walk you through the, the whole layout of the carriage here. And then I'll put my plank across and I'll get up there with the saw sharpener here in a bit. And we'll go ahead and just put another edge on that saw because uh, we've been into hardwoods lately and until I change this over to carbide, um, the, the steel teeth take a lot more maintenance. They take a lot more sharpening. You want to visually inspect your cable. Um, this basically is what drags your carriage up and down the track. And uh, you want to look at that cable for fraying. Um, you want to visually look at the track, make sure there's nothing cracking or breaking. Uh, here's that back rail that I was talking about right here that keeps the carriage from pushing off. And the log turner definitely is in need of a new chain. Um, I don't know if that's the original chain from 1985 or not, but uh, the turner does have its problems flipping logs and uh, I know they have redesigned the chains on them and uh, you want to check your shiv wheels and make sure nothing is binding in here or grinding. Um, you can see how badly they're wore down from years and years of running this carriage up and down the track. Eventually I'm going to have to replace these. But these were original uh, for when I bought this mill. Um, it, this thing has uh, sold quite a few million feet of lumber in its day. Then you want to walk around and you want to check your log deck out. Again, you just want to look for obvious things. Uh, make sure you don't got no pins on your chains coming out. Um, and this chain is pretty much wore out too, but it's, it's still feeding the logs up to it. Um, there's a lot of hoses, a lot of cylinders, and you sort of want to check all that out as you go and eventually we're going to oil these up for the spring. I just get chainsaw bar oil and I just get a roller and just turn the chains on the on position, just let them run and then I just uh, roll some oil on them and do that about twice a year and that really helps them out a lot. But okay, we're going to go ahead and uh, get over to the bus motor and we'll start on the oil change here. So we'll be with you here in a minute. Okay. Time to dr drain some oil out of this old girl. And she gotta be careful of this pan only holds five gallon. <laughs> the motor holds seven and a half. So what we're gonna do is just let out a few gallon. And then we'll go ahead and plug her back up temporarily. You can see warming it up a little bit does help. All right. Yeah, we'll go ahead and always helps to have rags and stuff laying around. This is a messy job. Okay, we'll go ahead and dump that out and we'll start over one more time. So we'll be with you in a minute. All right. Yeah, it's starting to rain up here now. Uh, we run just a heavy duty diesel uh, 1540 weight. Um, the bus motor takes seven and a half gallon or seven gallon. Um, now this is the second two and a half gallon jug. And what I will do 
at that point, we're going to put one gallon of Lucas treatment. Um, these older engines, it's a good idea to put that Lucas in there. It helps to uh, quiet it down, helps the rings out. Um, just a good idea. All right, we got the oil changed, and now we're going to fire up the bus motor and make sure that we have uh, good oil pressure. So. Check the gauge and see what it says. Yep, looks good. So it's all primed up. And we'll let that settle down now that the filter will be full of oil and we'll check the level, but we should be good. Well, we're gonna get on to our next uh, little job here. We'll go ahead and get this blade sharpened up and I'll show you that here in a second. I gotta get the compressor fired up and give you guys a little, little shot of that. So I'll be with you in a minute. Okay, we got the air compressor going here and the sharpener basically just clamps to the blade and all we're going to do is take the underside of that tooth and basically just take it flat so that's about all you have to do per tooth and you just keep jumping it from tooth to tooth and this blade will be sharp as a razor blade And with steel teeth, really you should be swedging them. And what that does is it maintains the curve and also builds strength to the tip of the tooth. But we don't plan on running any steel teeth. Really too much longer. It's just going to be uh, till we. Uh, so we wear them down and then we're going to pull them out we're going to put the uh, carbide in which i already bought and we'll do a video on that these, these teeth literally are held in by this piece here it's called a shank and the actual saw tooth is called a saw bit and it all winds out with a special tool you put the new bit in and then you oil it you put it back in and then you should have some sort of a homemade gauge to, to check it left and right but um, You want them dead centered in the saw, otherwise you'll get uh, a bad score in your cut. So we'll just uh, we'll keep working our way around the saw here, and I'm not going to show you the whole saw. You'll be you'll be bored by the time I get through 52 teeth here. Now's a good time to check the rim of your saw. Look for anything that's bad. Um, you want to look for bad chips in your uh, saw bits. And... But this takes about five minutes or so to go around the saw if you really want to hurry. I'm kind of enjoying a nice weather out here. But there you have it. And I'll be with you in a minute. 